Well, we're out in the woods again, and uh, it's time to put this longbow to the test. Now, the history of the longbow, well, I wouldn't say the longbow, the history of the bow, bow and arrow. Now, there's plenty of um, flint arrowheads found, and so that suggests that it goes back tens of thousands of years, some say 70,000 years. Uh, you know, a primitive man has been hunting with with this weapon for that long. Um, and uh, yeah, but where does the longbow come in? Well, it, it's really the Middle Ages, and um, with a hundred years' war, you know, 1346, um, it gets it gets used to great effect at the Battle of Cressy, which I talked about in the last video. Now, during the Hundred Years' War, and this is 1346, went on for about 116 years, every Sunday um, it was archery practice from everyone from 16, or every man from 16 to 60. Uh, all other sports were banned. There were a lot of sports played, even football back then, uh, but not during the Hundred Years' War. Everybody, this was the most important uh, weapon, and it was used by the common man. You know, this took actually years to master, though. You know, from a, a, from a young lad, you were firing small bows, and you built up and up and up until you were draw weights of oh, 150 plus pounds you know the archers they they naturally dislocated their shoulder when they pulled these things back to get massive uh, pull the, the arrows even longer than these which are 32 inches they would have been 36 you know three feet at least and big thick you know this is these are 5 sixteenths they either would use much thicker ones and so on that fateful day on the 26th of August 1346 um, Edward had crossed the Somme and he'd found high ground up here with the um, with the the Cressy Woods here and what he caught to the right they couldn't be he couldn't be flanked uh, he'd really worked this out uh, well he'd, he'd had some reconnaissance out here and the French they came charging in 20,000 of them and we've got seven and a half thousand archers two and a half thousand of them were uh, mounted and that five thousand weren't those five thousand um, that weren't mounted were paid about fourpence a day and the mounted archers were actually about sixpence so anyway they're all out there and they're ready to earn their their wages for the day now the french tried to come across here but there's a really high ridge and they couldn't they couldn't get down it was far too steep so they had to work their way around abervale and then come up here and they were funneled uh, which forced them to really basically get in a terrible mess there were the baggage train uh, was left right back here which of course had all the pavises uh, that the uh, crossbowmen would have uh, needed they were basically <laughs> they were very open to attack and you've got uh, Edward Black Prince's son 16 years old he's commanding this vanguard here and you've got you've got archers a huge triangular set of archers so you'd be they'd be able to shoot over each other as well there there and there the Earl of Northampton has got this vanguard here that's William Bowen or Billy to his friends uh, and well basically they were forced because of all the confusion that knights were all desperate to get to the English and just kill them uh, they're forcing these poor crossbowmen and I do have some sympathy for them uh, and I won't in a minute but uh, they, they they were in a terrible mess and of course it rained and their cords got wet and you know these bowstrings here were, were basically uh, tucked under their hats so they were dry once they got them back on all hell broke loose. So, what happens? Poor old crossbowmen are all up front, no pavises. They are, well, they must have felt absolutely naked. And uh, wet strings, oh God, it's gonna be all over. So, and it was, in fact, uh, the longbowmen must be killed half of them. The rest of them fled the battle scene. Well, I mean, wouldn't you? Of course, the French knights were absolutely disgusted with this and just saw it as a just, it was just utter, cowardice and um, charged and whilst they charged they just uh, chopped the rest of the uh, crossbowmen down uh, so the English thinking well that's handy uh, doing the work for us and um, so today what have we got well we've got one one crossbowman and this is actually fiction but let's just say one was so terrified he couldn't move he was just frozen with fear and um, and here he is our terrified crossbowman Oh yes. Now I don't mind chicken. Uh, in fact, I do not loathe it at all. Um, very tasty. Though. I don't think this one's going to be going in the oven later. But now look at him. I mean, at least well, he's got he's got a leaf preserving his modesty. But uh, well, who knows what's going to happen next? So, um, if there's any uh, <laughs> if there's any chicken fanciers out there or um, lovers of the Genoese crossbowmen, um, then you better look away now.
Well, that's what happens when you're frozen with fear. Uh, the poor old guy, but um, you know, he could have been mowed down by his, uh, his, his Frenchman if he wasn't uh, taken by an English longbowman.